local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. We feel it's important to also honor their spirits, honor their, their lives lost. Legal and mental support, along with the vigil honoring the eight people who lost their lives Tuesday in a bus crash. 45 others are covering tonight. We're going to hear from the families mourning their loved ones. Plus, we're taking a deeper dive into the past of the driver arrested for driving under. But we begin with first warning weather, and our team has been tracking storms all afternoon. Good evening, I'm Stuart Moore. And I'm Summer Knowles. Here is a live look near the Disney Resort. Chief Meteorologist Tony Minolfi joins us right now, and the rain is clearing up, Tony. Yeah, you know, we're, we're going in the right direction. That drier air is trying to build on in. You can see that on the water vapor channel, the orange right there. Still a few clusters of storms, one up north out ahead of the front, and then plenty of showers and storms. But these are advancing more towards the south, so it certainly looks like we're in really good shape up to the north. Metro areas look pretty good if there's one area that we have to watch for the next half hour so it might be this little cluster of thunder and lightning which is weakening on approach there uh, towards central Brevard County over towards maybe potentially Melbourne and Satellite Beach so again this evening one or two uh, thunderstorms could uh, produce some gusty winds and hail down south but otherwise I think we're going to be in pretty good shape one look at future cast pretty much tells the story we're drying on out between now and about 11 o'clock evening plan looks pretty good rain heads south muggy night temperature at 11 o'clock near 78. We're cranking up the heat the next couple of days. More on that when I see it coming up at 618. Happening right now in Apopka, the Farm Workers Association of Florida is holding a vigil to remember the eight lives lost in Tuesday's Marion County crash. Here's a live look at uh, people that are gathering at this remembrance in Apopka. The victims were all migrant farm workers who were traveling from a day's end in Gainesville to Cannon Farms in Denellen. And tonight, the driver of the pickup truck that crashed into their bus on State Road 40 is already facing consequences. That's right. Ryan Howard is now behind bars for DUI manslaughter after telling deputies that he smoked before getting behind the wheel. We have live team coverage for you this evening. Pamela Combs spoke with the man who lost his brother in this crash. Western's Lana Munoz heard from the Mexican consulate about the support being offered to victims. Our investigative reporter, Greg Fox has a look at the suspect's rap sheet, but West Jews Spencer Tracy starts us off at the Marion County Jail. And Spencer, the suspect appeared in court today. He did, and prosecutors say just three days prior to this crash, he was in another crash. Now they say that he is a danger to the road and will remain in jail here. Now, prosecutors say when they arrested Howard yesterday, his eyes were bloodshot and they said that his speech was slurred. Now he's due back for his next appearance next month. Of course, we'll give you, if we find out more information, we'll give it to you on air and online. For now, reporting live from the Marion County Jail, Spencer Tracy, West 2 News. At this time, 10 victims are still being treated at HCA Florida Ocala Hospital, seven listed in critical condition. Victims sent to other hospitals have all been released. Eight families are now mourning the loss of a family member, and those who were on the bus when the crash happened are shaken up and with very little to say. Well, she's Pamela Combs is in Gainesville for us. She spoke with the worker who lost his brother. All right, Pamela, thank you. And we are also now hearing from the Mexican consulate after yesterday's crash. West News Luana Munoz continues our team coverage right now live from Orlando, Luana. Yes, Summer, the Mexican consulate says that they have been very busy today, really contacting a lot of the victim's family members that are all the way back in Mexico. That's one of their jobs. Their other role is to provide legal and medical support and also to let those family members that are in Mexico to know uh, or help them to come back here to the United States so that they can identify their uh, families or their loved ones' bodies. The consulate spoke about the kind of people that were on that bus. These are all migrant workers with H-2A visas in order to get Get that visa. You cannot have a criminal record both here in the United States and in Mexico. It also means that they are here working alone. They can't bring their wife and their children with them. These are good people. Please think of good people. There are families, very poor families, but very good people making good things. Their job was to produce food. 
Well, the consulate says that their next step is to help the families that are in Mexico to come back here to the U.S. once again so that they can identify their loved ones. They're also having to go one by one contacting and finding all of these migrant workers that were on this bus. There was roughly between 43 and 46 people that were on that bus. The consulate is telling us they know that the trucking company that was responsible for busing them to and from work uh, did not have all of their paperwork and information handy. So it's been pretty difficult, but they are trying their hardest going again one by one, trying to identify each one of those individuals involved and letting them know what support and what services are available to them. Reporting live in Orlando tonight from the Mexican consulate, I'm Luana Munoz. Back to you. And continuing our live team coverage of this fatal bus crash, the suspect, Brian Howard, has been in trouble with law enforcement for more than two decades. Question News investigative reporter Greg Fox is here now. And Greg, some may wonder why Howard hasn't been punished more severely for repeated offenses. You know, those are good questions. Just consider this. Brian Howard has been convicted at least 20 time since 2003. Just take a look at this gallery of his mug shots. Again, going back a little over 20 years. Uh, most of these crimes are crashes and other traffic offenses. And except for one eight month sentence for grand theft, he seldom spent more than a day or so in jail. And the public defender also explained that a plea of not guilty will be filed on Howard's behalf when formal charges are filed. I'll send it back to you. All right, Greg, thank you. Cannon Farms in the Nellon says it will reopen tomorrow back to regular business hours. It remained closed for the second day this morning out of respect to the victims involved in the bus crash. According to public records, the suspect Brian Howard lives with his parents in the Nellon. His neighbors say the crash is heartbreaking. Oh, it's terrible, you know, just to think about, you know, what had happened. Eight people had died. A lot of lives are ruined right now. The hardworking people. Cannon Farms shared a fundraiser that's organized by the Farm Worker Association of Florida. It's where people can donate to help the victims and their families. We have a link to that on WESH.com. And we are still learning new details about this devastating crash. To get the latest information as soon as it comes out, download the WESH 2 News app. We'll be sure to send out push alerts like this one as soon as you learn new information. The Jacksonville Jaguars could be looking for a temporary home. That's right. We'll explain why Orlando could be the solution. Plus, deputies come across a unique roadblock, how they removed a nine-foot alligator to safety. And we're taking a look at newly released body cam video of a pro-Palestinian protest at Lake Eola. The moments they moved in to shut down demonstrators. Next. In Central Florida, the weather is always changing. That's why we work around the clock, so you know exactly what to plan for. From tracking the next big storm to how to dress the kids for school. That's why at West 2, we keep you at the center of what we do. Constantly monitoring the latest data so you can be prepared for what's next. No guessing, just an easy, understandable forecast, sun up to sundown. This is West 2 First Warning Weather, certified Central Florida's most accurate. Orlando Police just released body cam video of officers' weekend encounter with pro-Palestinian demonstrators at Lake Eola. About 1,200 people attended. No! 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 Officers arrested two people at Lake Eola Saturday for battery on a law enforcement officer. The department says officers also deployed a handheld chemical agent in the area of a group that became disruptive and violent. No one was hurt, but officers say that video shows them being attacked. Things had been peaceful until that point. Protesters we spoke with say several people, including kids, were caught in the gas sprayed. They also told us that there were no threats or violence on their end. A man working at a Seminole County apartment complex was hit and killed last night while simply doing his job. State troopers say a little before 9.30, 57-year-old was picking up garbage bags, part of the trash valet service. A 17-year-old driving an SUV through the parking lot hit the man and his truck. Troopers say the teen did not realize what had happened until he parked a few moments later. The pedestrian was dragged um, under this vehicle until the, the vehicle uh, you know, was now parked, and then that's when he realized what had happened. Troopers say driving and parking lots require an extra layer of attention with so many people potentially on foot. All right, deputies out in Tampa met a nine foot roadblock earlier today. Oh, hi, big boy. Mm. <laughs> big boy indeed. That is an alligator taking a nap in the middle of the road because why not? 
A group of Hillsborough County deputies alongside FWC managed to pick him up and relocate him to a safer spot. The sheriff's office called it just another day in Florida. Good for them. <laughs> All right, the Jacksonville Jaguars are working to seal the deal to build a new football stadium that could be the envy of the NFL. Now the team is looking for a place to play their games, and Orlando is in the running to be that place, and naturally the games would happen at Camping World Stadium. Orlando plays host to NFL Pro Bowl and preseason games, but in the regular season, that means big exposure and big money. The proposed stadium the Jags are looking to build is $1.4 billion worth of luxury football living. Construction would take about a year, we're told. I'm smiling because, uh, you know, I'd just be so happy for the kids and the families and all those folks that love this sport, love it at the highest level, to be able to say in our own town, even just for a few games, that we're in NFL City and we're hosting NFL regular season football games. Wow, I want to be there for that. Also in the running, Stewart's favorite place, the University <laughs> of Florida Stadium in Gainesville. I know you love that place. I'm going to be honest here on this one, I don't think it'd be a good fit in Gainesville. Not that I'm Orlando biased, it's only because... They would be outshined. Literally, in college towns, nobody cares about the pro team. Well, I don't care about that. I'm Orlando biased. I know, bias, I know. So yeah, bring it. Orlando. All right, we're getting our first look at a new nighttime drone show starting next week at Disney Springs. Disney Dreams That Soar features characters from across different franchises. Focuses on characters who have had a dream of flying. The show uses a total of 800 drones and also features well-known songs who tell an original story. The new nighttime spectacular begins next Friday and will run until September. That's cool and all, as long as you have clear skies. Which That's the, the last couple of nights <laughs> has not necessarily looked right. that way. Chief Meteorologist Tony Vinolfi joins us now. Tony, we could be finally clearing out. Yeah, you know, we're getting there. Sun's out, Marion County sun's out. Uh, still have some instability around though. So once we get past sunset, I'll feel a bit better about that. But I'm not worried about severe storms tonight. Just could be a couple rumbles of thunder. Uh, 80 to 85 out there right now. You can see that drier air pushing into the, the Panhandle. Little developing thunderstorm complex up towards Jacksonville. Gonna around the base of that area, low pressure, and then on out to sea. So we're in good shape. That front is on the move. That drier air is beginning uh, to work on in. There are a few showers uh, uh, that were over downtown Orlando on the attraction. Those have fizzled on out. A uh, few showers in and around Melbourne and Palm Bay. This is racing rapidly to the east at 40 to 50 miles an hour and weakening. But earlier today, Boy, we had some uh, ping pong size hail in and around Miko and Sebastian uh, uh, again right around the, the early afternoon today and late in the morning. So again, a little bumpy there today. Wind today, 35, 45 miles an hour. Winter Haven was leading the way with a 41 mile an hour wind gust. Got some much needed rain. That's the other big deal uh, with this uh, round of storms. West of land, Eustace, Paisley, and Altoona all come in with, with over two inches of rain. All coming in with over two inches of rain. Had to say that two times because we definitely needed it. It's been awfully dry. 7 p.m. clearing line moving on through central and then on into uh, uh, southern portions there of Osceola and on into Brevard County. Could be a few high clouds overnight tonight, but overall uh, the weather will be improving from north north to south as we get deeper into the evening. The outdoor temperature here in town 72, but noticeably drier and less humid the farther north and west you go. Let's take a look at that 12 hour forecast now for the city of Deland. Afternoon high temperatures here tomorrow. Jumping up into the lower 90s. We take a look down at Futurecast. There's the front dropping off towards the south briefly and then lifting back to the north as a warm front during the day on Friday. Could be an isolated east coast uh, thunder shower there if the breeze is able to get going because that moisture will be on the rise. For now, though, I want to wait one more model run before I put any uh, precipitation chances in for Friday. 88 to 90 along the coast, 90 to 93 back through the interior. If you are taking it to the attractions tomorrow, SeaWorld, Universal, uh, Disney, you're going to be in good shape. It's going to be hot. Make sure if you got the shades, the sunblock, and stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Here's another destination, Universal Studio. Into the uh, lower 90s by mid-afternoon. Saturday, showers and storms. With the front nearby on Sunday, a lot of clouds, a lot of showers, and a lot of storms. That'll knock the temperatures back. Sputtering on and off the wet season here, but uh, very shortly it's going to stay. Uh, those daily afternoon showers and storms. Hey, real quickly, 17 days now to the start of hurricane season. Hopefully you and your family have been working on those hurricane action plans. Watching a little bit of Saharan dust east of the Caribbean. 
But for now, we are fairly quiet across the tropical Atlantic. Pretty quiet Thursday and Friday. Here come those afternoon showers and storms there Saturday and Sunday before we dry things out on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, let's head out to, to Darren, who's on messy watch for tonight. Hey there, Tony. It's not a dry heat down at Interco Stadium. It is muggy, it is warm, and there's quite the football match getting ready to be played here as Inter Miami comes to town. But it's created quite the mess, if you will. A lot of 10 jerseys in this building, just not the right one. We're talking Leo Messi coming up next in sports. West 2 Sports is sponsored by Mullinax Ford, Florida's largest Ford retailer. For upfront pricing and no dealer fees, shop Mullinax where car buying is simple, easy, fun. Now, West 2 Sports, sponsored by Mullinax Ford. Hello, everybody. I'm Darren Stoltz. The sports comes to you live tonight from Inter and Co. Stadium in downtown Orlando as Inter Miami made the short trip up to take on Orlando City in the Florida Derby. But the big question is, would the GOAT be with them to take on Orlando City tonight? And the short answer of that is no. All right, plenty of coverage from tonight's match between Inter Miami and Orlando City coming up later tonight at 10 11. For now, sports is live in downtown Orlando. More news on the other side of the break. We have several stories we are following for you tonight at 7. We are staying on top of the tragic bus crash out of Marion County. We're taking a closer look now at the trucking company responsible for bringing those workers to a farm in Marion County. Western Investigates looks at the safety concerns involving similar worker programs. NASA honors three storytellers today for their work telling America's space story. And one of this year's inductees happens to be a familiar face to all of us here at West 2. That's our report for tonight. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt is next. We'll see you again at 7 and then at 10 and 11. Have a great night.